What's going on everyone? We are talking about the rise of Skywalker here today and all of the WTF questions we were left with when the credits roll. Joining me here today is Nick Lamone, our our resident cinephile here at IGN and our editorial expert David Griffin. Guys, thanks for joining me. Let's get right into it. Let's kind of go over some of the questions that didn't make a lot of sense when we were left uh, getting being done with the movie. First of all, who, so we know who Ray's father is now. Yeah. Or, yeah, we know who her, her father is. Who's Ray's grandmother? We know who we know her grandfather is Sheev Palpatine. Who knocked boots with Sheev oh, Palpatine? That's vile to think about. Um, he does have unlimited power. He does have unlimited I mean, power. Raymond Dermott was quite a handsome man before his transformation, you know, before the, the light, the energy yeah, got Yeah, but, to you know, him. if you're a Sith Lord, you probably don't have enough time for romance and stuff like that. So I would assume it is more of the, like... More dastardly, like maybe he forced himself upon someone, or maybe he pulled like a Anakin Skywalker. He forced impregnated some unlucky woman. I don't really know how. Yeah, it Yeah, that does beg the question. Obviously, he uh, the the Star Wars canon in the Darth Vader comic number twenty five. It, it it intimates very clearly that it was very likely that Sheev Palpatine was the person who caused the virgins of the in the Force that led to Anakin's birth. So he so can why, do it if he can do that. Does he have the need for the physical act of making? Well, he's himself? still like a human being. I mean, he's still like a man. I mean, he has needs, desires. The thing is, what the problem with Star Wars is it's very, it's not very, it's not a very sexual place. You know, they don't really because it's made, for, made yourself, for kids. Man. It's made for kids, <laughs> so they don't go there a lot. So it's all I'm always like, oh right, these people have sex, they have kids. Like, duh. I mean, I'm sure he maybe had somebody in his harem. You know, some women he has a pro he just calls them up and they come over and they do whatever, and then boom, kid. He, he just strikes me as a type who would be like, I need to uh, create an offspring that is the most powerful force user possible. So I need to find a suitable candidate. And since it is established in a comic book, as you say, then that just makes me think, oh, he just did it. The first time, uh, or I guess maybe a second time this way, it's like force impregnation. That's a that's a force ability we don't know about yet. Gotcha. Maybe <laughs> no. Well, it, no, we do know about. Oh it, well, it's in a comic, right? It well, and it's that's how that's where Darth Vader came. That's how Anakin came mm. to fruition. Man, still, that still, we still have no answers. I like, just to think he, I like to think he had a lady on the side. You know, I like to think he had he some had a side kind of, piece. He had not a, a side piece. It's not yeah. a story the Jedi would tell you. <laughs> Perfect bumper. Moving on to the next one. Let's talk about Exegol. That is the ancient Sith world that Kylo Ren finds the Emperor hiding out on. That's where he's been all this time doing his dark side stuff, being not dead and everything. Uh, but our main question about that is there's the huge Sith temple yeah. that the throne is seated in. It had this, oh, it was almost like a coliseum. Yeah. And those seats were filled with a bunch of people who did not have faces it just seemed or like even a, bodies. So who were those people? Who were those audience members? It felt like a Sith rock show because they all seemed to be chanting the Duel of the Fate song, which I thought was dope because that set me up for like, oh, a cool lightsaber battle's about to happen. Mm -hmm. It didn't, but it just left me when I'm like, who the hell are these people? Have they been trapped in this this planet for so long and they're like Sith sympathizers? Like, what's going on? I had heard an interesting theory that they were like former sith like manifested in a physical form or corporeal form like the spirits of them i think it's something along yeah. those lines in that scene when kylo first makes his way to exegol and he finds the emperor there what is it that the, the emperor tells him that palpatine says he says i'm every voice every voice in your head, in your head right, right? Yeah. and he goes through a, a few different ones including vader vader mm -hmm. snoke palpatine mm -hmm. um what if that's every sith I think so. I like that theory. It kind of reminded me of the the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings, you know, like these just ghostly figures dressed in black. I don't think they could actually do anything to anybody or maybe hurt anybody, but they were just representing... They represent like to go to the show. Yeah, they're, they're just representations <laughs> of old Sith. So I, I think they were ghostly figures. I could see that. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's a big one. So Palpatine's entire shtick, his whole deal in this movie, is trying to get Rey to come to his world and kill him out of rage so he can then inhabit her body and do the whole emperor thing all over again. Mm -hmm. So she does kill him. I don't think she technically does. Cause like she, I don't know if that would hold up in a court of law. He technically kills himself, right? Why? Because he was the one dealing out the force lightning. He was doing the force lightning. And like, hold on. 
It is. It's like a fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Because that happened before. To him. Yeah, to him. <laughs> he, he shot force lightning at Mace Windu, who deflected it, held it close to his face. He got intensified old aging. If he didn't do that, aging. he would still have a regular face. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's happening again makes me I'm like, hey, man, this is all your fault That's on this you. time. Because That's on like, you. <laughs> this literally happened to you like... Six movies ago. So what's going on here? Well, I think the whole thing is the rules for powers and force abilities, they change with every new comic book or novel or game. Everything just kind of changes. So like, there's no, I don't think there's no rule book in the Star Wars universe to explain how, like, why anything happens, especially with force powers. It's also arbitrary because yeah. wasn't his master plan, like, wasn't what we were told in the trailers that this was part of his plan the entire time, getting Rey to go to Exegol to kill him so that he could put basically Legion, which is like every single demon in existence, mm -hmm. into one body. So every Sith Lord into one body. But then that doesn't work out. So then Kylo shows up and he goes, never mind, Ray. How about the power of two? I will take both of you. I thought the reason Kylo was there was to lure Ray there. Yeah. No, okay, the yeah. w <clears throat> WTF question in yeah. this portion of this discussion is what the hell was Palpatine's actual plan? Because let's look at it for a moment. His long game was to get Ray to come so he could inhabit Ray. So mm -hmm. how does he do this? He uses Snoke to get to Kylo to get to Ray. If this is the most powerful being in existence, why so many middlemen? Mm -hmm. Can you just pretend someone's like her dad or mom and just be like, hey, come with me to the scary planet. We'll figure it out when we get here. Or just like get your son Doug Palpatine and his <laughs> and wife don't, and, and don't, make them yeah. do it. Yeah. And don't explain your plan. Right. See, now to anyone. Don't explain your plan. Be like, what I was trying to do is stop monologuing. Just let her, <laughs> if you want her to kill you, just let her kill you. Don't he's saying that for us. I know. He's saying that for That's us. How, how will stop we know? It. Stop doing See, that. See, I, I feel like now we're at the point where we're just being like plot hole, like pull, pulling them open and stuff. <laughs> but that's literally but that, what we are paid to do. But that is one of those things. Like this is an egregious plot hole where it's just like this doesn't make, if you're being a mastermind, it really didn't make any, you went a long roundabout way of doing it. In Snoke's defense, if you look at Luke's plan at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, I, oh, Sidious that is. plan is bonkers. Like, here's what we're going to do. You droids are going to go break into this place. We're <laughs> going to go eventually. Like, it's so many stages if you actually break that yeah. down. So Snoke isn't the only person to come up with absolutely off the wall rescue plans or whatever. He just strikes me as a dude to be like, oh, plan A didn't work out. Actually, plan B, the power of two. That was my plan. Yeah, okay, that's not working. Plan C, I'm just going to kill you myself. But he's not that guy. <laughs> One of our questions on this list mm -hmm. is how did Palpatine come back? We're not going to answer that in this video because I made a different video about that. So keep an eye o mm. open for that. Kind of breaks down all the ways that the Star Wars canon has laid these breadcrumbs suggesting that Palpatine was planning to do this all along. Because mm. that's something we do know about Palpatine mm -hmm. is he is a master planner. He's someone who sees the long game. He could out, out, you know, out maneuver both uh, Littlefinger and Varys from Game of Thrones. Like this is someone who has plotted this long, what is it, 70 years of interstellar <laughs> war that he's in control of both sides up mm -hmm. the entire time. He's not someone who just does things off the off the cuff. He's someone who plans. So, so a little side note, another thing. Does this robe change color when he gets his powers? Like it's it's, it's more it's got a little it red did. tint, little red tint to it. It was all black. It's got a little red. Yeah. Like you went like, but oh, it was like it, to me, it was like, oh, he looks like he does in the, in the prequels. It's like playing Assassin's Creed, and you go and you go buy a new outfit. He'd be like, no, I like a little red in my outfit. I'm a little red. <laughs> he was dressed like the Senate. Well, he yeah, was dressed like the true. Final Order that's troopers true. too. True. Oh, and yeah. it, like his design, black and red, completely mimics his mascot the color. Final yeah, I get order. it. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Chewie's death. <sighs> Chewie's there death. Two ships confused. Okay, right. But we were only shown one. The characters in the movie were only shown one. There was only one, right? You, you it was know, behind the rock, I think. It's behind one of the rocks. You, I just didn't see it. You, you know. know what that's called? That's called bad filmmaking. <laughs> that's bad storytelling. Okay, that's so, so that's question. Deus Ex Machina straight up. Here's Textbook. the question then. Was that how it was written on the page? Mm. Or was, it, was that an, a decision that was made in the editing room? We need mm. some connective tissue. We need a scene where we explain that Chewie wasn't really in that ship. And that's what we got was a one-sentence explanation that he wasn't in that. But just, and everybody was like, what? Just don't try to pretend you killed Chewie. It's as or, simple as or that. I'm mm. going to become very unpopular with this comment. Kill, mm. Kill Chewie. Forget that's the past. That's what made the expanded universe They've done it before. so crazy. Spoiler. In, in, uh, <laughs> in legend story. Yeah, yeah. The New Jedi Order yeah. starts with yeah. the death of Chewbacca. Planet and that's what made that so weighty. Yeah. 
Forget the past. Kill it but if you have movie, to. But in this movie, the second, or bring him back in the next ten minutes. <laughs> That's oh. yeah. Forget the past. Kill it if you have to, or don't don't forget. You can it, always just retcon that shit. Yeah, that has to be done in post. Like, there's something that they're like, oh wait, this doesn't make any sense. Let's fix it like this. It feels like a post production answer mm-hmm. to a problem. But like, how did they not notice? That's such a weird issue. Like the fact that we're talking about continuity and that yeah, it's so silly. For folks who have been paying attention to the canon, who have been t- paying attention to Star Wars and Jedi stuff and Force stuff for yep. a while, Force healing has always kind of been on the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the question is, how much Force healing can you do in one sitting before you just die? Well, that's the thing. We don't, again, we don't know. Like I said, Nick's saying it's very arbitrary. We don't really know. Very nebulous. It's very nebulous. Yeah, so you have the, uh, he, you know, Kylo uses it, but I guess we assume that he uses his whole body like that's all of his life force to save her because she looked she was dead yeah she was dead she was dead so he had to transfer all of his life force to save her and then i, th- I, I think, think it's the, the rule of poetic tragedy is what it, what it involves that's how force healing works it's like oh is this snake injured uh, it's only a little bit injured so we'll just heal that that'll, that'll only hurt her a little bit but if it's like oh she's completely dead well then someone clearly has to sacrifice themselves in order to bring her out that's fine. I don't really have a problem with that. I guess the only thing that really does for me is call attention to the fact that Baby Yoda must be extremely powerful because not only can he pick up a giant uh, mud horn, but he also has the ability to potentially heal someone, I would assume, like from death and still be fine. Yeah, again, I, I like, don't, is that, I they, don't they teach that to all Jedis or is that something you just, maybe only some people can do? Is it something you, if the Jedi Academy was still open? Depends you on that? how many midi chlorians you have. Oh. What's that midichlorian? Is that a 400? That count? You know what it is? I know this is going going off a little bit of a tangent. It wraps up real quick. Is it reminds me of when you're watching the Harry Potter movies and you see like the adults do all these really cool things. Even the upperclassmen can't do. I'm like, how do you learn that? Like, where do you get that ability? Like, he's doing stuff with like water and snakes. Like, how do you do that stuff? How do you learn that stuff? Like, why do some Jedi have abilities others don't? I don't know. I wish they'd explain. I, well, I think it's like like Palpatine's Force lightning. Right. Like, it's only a certain tier of yeah. Force user that has the ability to kind of channel the Force and use it in these ways that really on isn't that technically like a Sith power? The ability to resurrect someone from the dead. Like, that's the, the whole point of the, well, the, the Nick, tragedy Nick, of Darth Plague is the life. No, 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 The power of the dark side is a pathway to many abilities that some <laughs> would deem to be unnatural. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, I, I've, I've, I'm okay with the idea yeah. that different force powers are accessible to different individuals. I, that's something that has been passed down sure. since the EU. So that's... I, I'm cool with that catch idea. the plus, lightning plus and in, throw it back. in the EU they yeah. would have they had, had other Jedi classes like so there were even sure. Jedi that were being trained to be you know medics and, yeah. and healers instead of being warriors or counselors or whatever so mm-hmm. that works for me yeah, I totally makes sense that, that jam for me so staying on the, the topic of force users real quick mm-hmm. why did Ray go back to Tatooine to bury both Luke and Leia's sabers I actually have a theory for this but I'm interested in what you have to say I had zero idea other than it being a nice circle for the franchise it definitely was that <laughs> that aside from everything filmmaking wise it's definitely a good Th- that's it though that's i'm like okay. I, I don't know why this is happening dave but, what do you think honestly the first thing i thought when i saw that i was like how come how come the jawas haven't stripped this bear for parts because as we know with the jawas they strip everything they will use whatever they can to use so um i'll take you one step further than I mean, that I, I, who I think... cleaned up the the lars's corpses Oh yeah, they're all, they're the all crispy. It's probably the job. Anyway, continue so, on. So no, my uh, I think it was just a, a callback and a nice way to end it all. I mean, you had the two sons, you had the the music. You think of Luke and him looking out there. It's like and it's, all that it's everything full circle. Sure. It's all full circle. I think that's what that was about. I think uh, this actually that moment kind of calls back to the moment where Luke was like, "Hey, a lightsaber or Jedi's weapon actually des- deserves a little bit respect, mm. a, a bit of, a bit of respect." And if you remember Ray's journey. She's always had respect for that lightsaber. Mm-hmm. She traveled to Octo. She hunted down Luke Skywalker when nobody else could, so yeah. she could hunt him. She down even gave back to Leia back. because she wouldn't think she was deserving of it. Yeah. He didn't take to that effort so kindly the first time <laughs> around, but she still had respect for the weapon, and so she did mm-hmm. the best thing she knew how. She packaged it up really nice. She buried it using the Force, yeah. trying to hide it, just trying to return it to where it was supposed to go. So that actually, burial. that made sense because she actually did have respect from the weapon from the get-go, and that's something they've built over three movies. But mm-hmm. does that mean the next Star Wars saga begins on Tatooine again when someone finds the two lightsabers? Leia was never <laughs> with, yeah, Leia and Luke weren't together on, I mean, not when they were baby, when they were kids. Yeah, that's interesting. It doesn't Luke, hold any yeah. significance Luke, for her. Tatooine yeah. isn't really Luke's birthplace. No, it's not, that's where no. he grew up, but right. that's not where he right. was born. Yeah. Uh, it, I think you're right. It is very much a ceremonial burial, taking the the lightsaber back to its original 
quote unquote home. Okay, last one, and I don't really even know what to make sense of this one or how to make sense of this one. Light speed skipping. Go. I mean, it looked really cool. Uh, I think that's really the only purpose it's there other than being like a dramatic first act intro. But like outside of that, like looking at it logistically from a lore perspective, I didn't think that it was possible to track uh, like ships through hyperspace unless they had a tracker. That's what La- Last Jedi established, right? Am right. I crazy? You didn't know that's correct. Are TIE fighters able to travel through hyperspace? These new ones seem to be. But they couldn't before. Uh, at least in like A New Hope, when they chase that the, the Tie Fighter that leads them to mm-hmm. the Nada Moon, it's actually. A I hate space to go like really, really old school, but I used to play the PC games like X Wing versus Tie Fighter mm-hmm. and the game Tie Fighter on PC way back in the day, and you couldn't go to hyperspace with the Tie Fighters, but you yeah, could with the X Wings. A regular those, Tie Fighter, yeah. you can't, but yeah, X Wings are yeah. hyperspace capable. Yeah, it, it just seemed weird. like when I was watching it, I was like, oh, they're traveling like on the tailwind essentially of the Millennium Falcon. But then that's when I remembered, like, well, in Last Jedi, they said that you couldn't do this. And then at this point, I was like, eh, it probably doesn't matter at the it end looked of this. Cool. Yeah. It, it just looked, looked cool. It did look it cool. Really cool. It looked like something that Han Solo would do, you know, when not right. knowing what's on the other mm-hmm. side. He would just wing it and see what happened. Um, they but tra- Poe obviously has a little bit of that energy going on. They yeah. traveled mm-hmm. to so many planets with vertical traps. It's crazy. They could have run into so many things so many times. They sure could have. <laughs> uh, all good answers, guys. I don't know if any of them... Are really real but that's what we think but what we think isn't really all that important what you think is important we want to see all that show up in the comments below so let us know your best theories for all of these issues how did how did Pal- palpatine survive what the heck is light speed skipping why did why did ray bury the lightsabers i want to hear it from you please uh, let us know down in the comments below in the meantime hang with us all week because we have a ton Literally, it's like 40 videos of like Rise of Skywalker content coming out. So just hang with IGN all this week. We're going to have all of it. And just make sure that you uh, follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.